Carlo, congratulations for the title and the Champions League. Talking about the game, I don't know how you went into the dressing room at half time. If you went in screaming, if you were calm, if you were angry, willing to talk to many players, to any of the players, what happened at half time and what happened in the 20, in the 54th minute when you changed to a 4-3-3? Uh, well, I didn't need to get angry. I needed to clarify a few things because it was pretty clear how Dortmund wanted to play. They did a fantastic game in transition and we lost our balance a bit and we had to, 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 to manage their transition better. We lost many balls in, in the rival, in the opponent's uh, half and we thought about that changing the system would be better for us and giving... Uh, um, concentrate a few more players in midfield. We started with Valverde on the right, but then Rodrigo played there. And what we brought Valverde back to join Camavinga and Cross, and I think it was better for us in the second half. And there is a sentence that says that the best in life are the simple things. You, you talk to us many times with uh, way, a simple way of speaking that is not not very not, has, doesn't happen very often. You talked about a lot about enjoying and about suffering of this final. I wanted to ask you what are the football arguments, the most simplest but the strongest footballing arguments that has Real Madrid in order to be able to win this match? And in terms of suffering, how much did you suffer in this final? Well. I, I think this season, I said that we had many, many trouble. We lost some quality players. We had to substitute, we had to replace them with sacrifice and commitment. And this is what, what happened today, exactly the same. I said that yesterday, you have to win this Champions League with sacrifice and with quality. One of the two is not enough. You need both ingredients. And this quote leaves me very, makes me uh, very satisfied because we, we never give up. We always fight until the end. And uh, in the dressing room at the end of the, f uh, the first half, we were quite calm. You know, the, the, the players talked about, about themselves. What do we talked about the change in the system together? It wasn't my decision alone. I, I, I told that to the players. I said we need what it would be best if we changed, and we did it together. Tony Cross just left forever, for, for, left Real Madrid. What did he say to you after the game, and what are you going to miss? Well, he was. Re I'm really grateful to him. He had has finished at the very top. There is no way of, of finishing at, you know, in, a, in a higher minute, uh, in a higher position than this. Uh, like I said, he had the balls to finish it. Uh, he is a legend in this club, and. Uh, all the all the Real Madrid fans are grateful to him too for what he has done. Not only uh, uh, because of his game, but his attitude, his professionalism. He's never missed a single day that he's he's played for Real Madrid. I said to him, "We're waiting. If you change your mind, we're still here. We'll wait for you." Congratulations. Nobody has changed five champions uh, as a coach and nobody has changed with their son as an assistant coach. From an emotional point of view, is how important is that? Emotionally, well, it's really good, of course. Uh, I, my son is my assistant coach. That's the truth. We are a family. I think that Real Madrid is a family. This is the it says a lot about this club. It's a footballing family. It's a very healthy, clean atmosphere. Uh, it's, it's fantastic for the structure and the tradition and etc. And this club working within a family, I think it's much better than working in an industry, if you like. So we feel at home 
when we work every day at Valdebebas at Real Madrid uh, headquarters and that obviously having my son next to me <laughs> helps me a lot because he can tell me things that nobody else can tell me. Uh, talking about the sea again, like uh, sailors, when... I mean, if you uh, assess the rest of the season and what happened at, at Manchester City, what would what would be the what would you uh, what would be, how would you rate yourself? I would rate ourselves as a as a ten out of ten. This season has been a ten out of ten because we could manage it really well until the end, and my team and my players have been spectacular. The other day you confessed that uh, before the game you, you had fear and nerves. I wanted to ask you about a different kind of fear. Do you think your rivals ha can be fearful at the, uh, in front of the Real Madrid shirts and when they are not clinical in front of goal like Borussia did in the first half? Do, do you think that can, be, that can pay for it in the second half? Well, of course, normally it's something that happens in football. If, if, football, if you have your chances and you don't materialize, you know, you, you give a, a big advantage to the to your rival. You know, they played better than us and had more chances than us in the first half, but they let us get away with a, you know with nil nil. And at the end of the uh, during the second half, when we started to have a bit more balance and we started playing better, we managed to win the game, to win the match. Uh, congratulations! What goes through your head? Uh, yeah. And it's, is it another day in the office, another title? What's behind all this? And what do you think about football? Because they will want the 16th uh, trophy already. People will want that. <laughs> yeah, it is. that's the way it is. That's the way football is. What, what goes through my head? I'm really happy. I'm really, really content. Because... Well, everybody, uh, everybody's waiting for this ninth final for Real Madrid you know, to win in a row. And the danger of not winning it was real because as Borussia was really good at the, at, in the first half. And, and um, Borussia was a really uncomfortable rival in that respect. What's going to happen next? Something is going to happen. Something is going to happen for sure. We will be competitive. <laughs> We have lost a really important player for us, but we have players who can replace him in a different way. Little by little, we will think how we manage that, like, like we always did, like I always did. We will adapt to the characteristics of the players that we have in our squad. If we don't have Tony Cross, we will have to play in a slightly different way, but we have fantastic players and we have resources in order to, to remain competitive. What happened to you, Thomas? I have a sore throat. Congratulations, first of all. That's the most important thing. You, you, you screamed more than I did. Yes, of course. What did your players think? What are your players going to, going to need to, in order to reset ahead of seven titles that you're going to play for, seven trophies that you're going to play for next season? Well, there is no danger in that respect of being a full belly, if you like. In this club, there is a, a, a con con continuous demand. We're never satisfied. We will have an, another fantastic day tomorrow with our fans. Then we'll go to rest. My players will be in the, uh, at the Euros, at the Copa America, etc. And we'll come back with the same eagerness, with the, with the same uh, uh, with the same um, eagerness, uh, excitement, anticipation as before. Congratulations. And what will be your next career tar target? Target? Um, <laughs> to try to do my best all the time, to try to do my best. I think um, um, this competition gave to me fantastic uh, happiness. Um, as a player, as a manager, and um, 
my target is to try to repeat the same emotion that we had uh, the week after, after this game. And, and so this is the, the, the target. I, am, I, I have the luck to be in the best club in the world. Last one here. Hola, mister, aquí. Enhorabuena, de corazón. Eh, en España, no sé si... Con Congratulations. In Spain, there is a set phrase that says uh, second part was never good. But your second, uh, so talking about your second uh, stint in the in, in the club has been fantastic. Did you expect when you got a phone call from Real Madrid to come back? Did you could you foresee the success you were living? Well, to be honest with you, it was complicated to to think that it could I could do that in th winning in three years to to champions to to Champions League and and two leagues etc with in with a team that was changing slightly little by little but what's changing uh, Real Madrid is still the best team in the world it's been a, a, a fantastic present for me in, in the, the the chance to to come back here and I'm enjoying here trying to show my the best version of myself and make the most of it Muchas gracias, señor Ancelotti.